Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, Practice Set 15. In this video, we're going to look at some additional practice problems for our lesson on graphing linear equations in two variables. All right, so we just want to graph each linear equation in two variables. We're going to start out with 2x plus y equals negative 2. So I'm going to use the intercept method. So remember, that's where you plug in a 0 for x, plug in a 0 for x, that gives you your y-intercept. So we'd have 2 times 0 plus y equals negative 2. So this would go away and you just have y equals negative 2. And then I'd also use the x-intercept. So I'd plug in a 0 for y. That would give me the x-intercept. So 2 times x plus 0 equals negative 2. So then I'd have 2x is equal to negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. I'd get x is equal to negative 1. So now I need a third point as a check. I always want to try to end up with nice small integers, so let me just use 1. So I'm going to plug in a 1 for x, 2 times 1 plus y equals negative 2. This would be 2 plus y equals negative 2. Subtract 2 away from each side of the equation, and I would get y is equal to negative 4. So if x is 1, y is negative 4. So now I have three ordered pairs. I have 0 comma negative 2, I have negative 1 comma 0, and I have 1 comma negative 4. So I'm going to plot these and then draw a line through them. So again, my equation is 2x plus y is equal to negative 2. My ordered pairs, I have 0 comma negative 2, which is the y-intercept. I have negative 1 comma 0, which is the x-intercept. And then I have a point for a check, which is 1 comma negative 4. So 0 comma negative 2. So that's going to be right here. And again, that's where we're going to cross the y-axis. x is 0 at that point. This is the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. Now for my x-intercept, negative 1 comma 0, that's right here. This is where we're going to cross the x-axis. And then lastly, my point that I'm using as a check, 1 comma negative 4. So here's 1, and then I'm going down 4. So that's right here. All right, so we're going to draw a line through these points. Okay, and I always draw arrows at the end of the line that I create. And the arrows just tell me that the line is going to extend in both directions forever and ever and ever. So this line is the graph of the equation 2x plus y equals negative 2. So 2x plus y equals negative 2. All right, what about something like x equals 1? Well, we saw this in the lesson. This is a vertical line. So I don't need to go through and make points because no matter what the value is for y, x is always 1. So if I put y is 5, x is 1. y is 0, x is 1. y is negative 5, x is 1. y is 2 billion, x is 1. So in order to graph something like this quickly, our equation again is x equals 1, you just find 1 on the x-axis. So that's right here. And I'm just going to draw a vertical line, right? Because no matter what the value is for y, x is 1. So if it helps you, you can do a few points. So let's say y is 6, x is going to be 1. Let's say y is 3, x is going to be 1. Let's say y is negative 7, x is going to be 1. Again, just find 1 on the x-axis and draw a vertical line. Okay, and not perfectly straight, but again, I'm drawing this kind of freehand, so just kind of bear with me. And I'm going to put arrows at each end, again, to say that this goes up forever and ever and down forever and ever. It continues forever and ever and ever in each direction. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have x minus 5y equals 0. So we saw in the lesson that this is an example of a line that passes through the origin. So when you get something like this, it's more work because you can't just use the x and y intercepts. The x and y intercept both occur at 0 comma 0. If I plugged in a 0 for x, I'd have negative 5y equals 0. Well, negative 5y can only be 0 if y is 0. So when you see something in this format, ax plus by equals 0, you know one point on the line is 0 comma 0. This line passes through the origin. Now, 
To get another point going, I'm going to rewrite this equation as negative 5y is equal to negative x. I just subtracted x away from both sides. The reason I want to do that is I want to make sure when I choose points for x or I choose points for y that the result for the other one is a nice clean integer that I can graph. Because I'm going to be dividing by negative 5 here, why don't I use the number 5? So if x is 5, I'd plug in a 5 here. And to solve this, I'd divide both sides by negative 5. So this would cancel, and this would cancel, and I'd have y is equal to 1. So if x is 5, y is 1. So now let me use negative 5. So if x is negative 5, what's y? So remember, I already have a negative out in front, and I'm plugging in a negative 5 for x. So that's minus a negative 5, which is plus 5. And now I'm dividing by negative 5. So that cancels with that. I get y is equal to negative 1. So this is now negative 1. And so I have three points, 0 comma 0. I have 5 comma 1. And then I have negative 5 comma negative 1. So let's take those down and graph them. So again, I'm working with x minus 5y equals 0. And my points are 0 comma 0, 5 comma 1, and negative 5 comma negative 1. So if I plot the point 0 comma 0, that's at the origin. And again, we know this goes through the origin because of the way it's set up. Now the next point was 5 comma 1. So 5 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. So there's 5 comma 1. And then we had negative 5 comma negative 1. So negative 5 over here, down 1 over here. And now we have our three points, and we connect them to graph the line. Okay, and then I put arrows at each end to, again, show the fact that this line continues indefinitely in both directions. So this line is the graph of the equation, x minus 5y equals 0. All right, let's take a look at y equals negative 6. So this is an example of a horizontal line. No matter what we choose for x, no matter what value we choose, y always equals negative 6. So to graph this, we just go down to our coordinate plane. And again, y is equal to negative 6. So we find negative 6 on the y-axis. That's right here. And we just create a horizontal line right? that touches that point. Because no matter what value I choose for x, if I choose 3 for x, y is negative 6. If I choose 6 for x, y is negative 6. If I choose 9 for x, y is negative 6. If I choose negative 5 for x, y is negative 6. So you can kind of go through and make some points if that makes it easier for you. But essentially, the quick way to do it is find negative 6 on the y-axis and just draw a horizontal line. And again, I extend arrows from both ends to show that this line continues indefinitely in both directions. So this is your graph for y equals negative 6. All right, let's take a look at one more. We have 8x plus 5y equals negative 15. So let's use our intercept method. So let's start out with the x-intercept. So to get the x-intercept, y needs to be 0. So y would be 0. So I would have 8x equals negative 15. All right, if I plugged in a 0 there, that would go away. Now, if I divide both sides by 8, I'm not going to get an integer. So I don't want that. I want something that's easy for me to graph. So I'm going to throw this out. I don't want that. Now I'm going to think about the y-intercept. So what if x was 0? So 8 times 0, that would go away. And I can just write 5y equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 5. This cancels with this, and I'm going to have what? I'm going to have y equals negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. So both are nice, clean integers, very small. I'm good with that. So I'm going to choose two more ordered pairs, and I've got to choose properly. So let's just look at this 5y equals negative 15, just this part of the equation. Forget about this for a second. If 5y equals negative 15, I know that negative 15 right now is divisible by 5. Right? If I divide both sides by 5, I end up with an integer, so that's good. Now, I'm adding back on 8x to the mix, so plus. I want to choose a value for x that when I move this guy over here and I divide by 5, I get an integer. 
So one thing that jumps out at me right away, I know if I use negative 5 just by eyeballing this, if I use negative 5 for x, this would be negative 40. So I add 40 to both sides of the equation. This is gone. And I'll have 5y is equal to 25. Divide both sides by 5, and I'll have y equals 5. Nice, clean, small integer. So now I just need one more. Let me use 5 now, positive 5. So 8 times positive 5. So this would be positive 40 plus 5y equals negative 15. Subtract 40 away from each side. That's going to go away, and I'll have 5y is equal to negative 55. Divide both sides by 5, and I get y equals negative 11. Now, that's a little big for me, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. I like things to be between the range of negative 10 and positive 10, but we'll go ahead and use it. You can always stretch your graph by 1 or 2 to make it work. So my ordered pairs would be 0, comma, negative 3, negative 5, comma, 5, and 5 comma negative 11. So again, my equation is 8x plus 5y equals negative 15. And there are my ordered pairs. So let's find 0 comma negative 3. 0 comma negative 3. So that's going to be right here. And because x is 0, remember that's the y-intercept. And you can see this is where it's going to cross the y-axis. Again, this is your y-axis, right? the vertical axis. So next we have negative 5 comma 5. So 5 units to the left and 5 units up. So that's right here. And then lastly, we have 5 comma negative 11. So 5 units to the right and 11 units down. So this is going to take me off my graph here. So if I measure, it's going to be about right here or negative 11, so that's where it would be. I'm just going to kind of extend this and put that this right here is negative 11. Again, if it's one or two more than what you have, you can make it work. right? I don't like to, but you can make it work. Okay, so there's our line. And again, we put arrows at each end to say that it continues indefinitely in each direction. And again, our equation here our equation for this line is 8x plus 5y equals negative 15. 